<clears throat> hey, how's it going? Uh, just a moment here. I'm just loading the stream. Looks like we're live on Facebook, and we're just waiting on YouTube right now. Um, for those watching on Facebook, I'm going to be talking about the iPad Pro and the uh, Wacom Mobile Studio Pro today. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments, and uh, at the end of the video, I'll try to, I'll try to answer your questions. All right, cool. So we're we're live on YouTube and we're live on Facebook. Um, so if you've been following me on social media, I have been whining a lot about uh, which of these devices to keep: the iPad Pro 12.9 or the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. Um, I've had the iPad Pro for a, about 30 days uh, and the Wacom about a week and a half or maybe two weeks. Um, the, uh, the idea was is I really wanted something that I could take with me when I traveled or when I went on vacations um, or just in the evenings I could you know lounge on the couch and watch TV and get some work done. Um, so. I started with the iPad Pro uh, 10.5 and I released a video about maybe three months ago. Uh, I didn't like that one at all and actually took it back. Um, and I have a whole video describing why I didn't like it. Uh, after I re released that video, I started seeing a, a lot of just amazing artwork that was being produced by the iPad Pro and I got a lot of feedback. Um, and death threats for not liking the iPad Pro initially. So a couple friends of mine recommended that the 12.9 was way better than the 10.5. Uh, so I decided to give it another shot, mostly because uh, of Clip Studio Paint. Um, the program that I love was released for the iPad Pro. Um, so I gave it another shot and I'm glad I did because I think two things changed everything for me. The bigger size, uh, even though it's just a couple inches, it makes an enormous difference. Um, and then Clip Studio Paint changes the entire device. Um, to me, it transforms it from a sketchbook to something that can actually produce real work. Um, so I want to compare the two devices because uh, I'm I'm a nut. I, you know I've made like this crazy list of pros and cons. Um, I've been losing sleep over it. Both of these devices are amazing, uh, but I decided to stick with the iPad Pro. Um, so I'm going to be taking the Wacom back, and I'll explain why. Um, but really, the biggest difference is the price um, with the Wacom. This thing costs about $2,100 after taxes. You know, that's a lot of cash. Uh, whereas the iPad Pro 12.9 um, with the pencil, because um, that's an extra hundred bucks, is about 950. And uh, which is still pretty expensive for a tablet. But if these two devices were the same price, I would be keeping the Wacom. But with such a huge price difference, like anytime I picked up the Wacom, I would just be thinking, man, this thing has got to be twice as good as the iPad. And what I found was, uh, I found that it wasn't. Um, I found that basically the stuff that I could draw on the iPad was essentially the same as with the, the Wacom. So, um, so it's going back. But let me, let me compare some of the technical details real quick. Um, I don't want to make this a real long video because I know everybody's busy and and pro pro staying out of the cold. Uh, so one area where the iPad beats the Wacom big time is its touch sensitivity. In uh, And I'm sorry, the screen, it's hard to capture the screen with my camera, but you can kind of see. Um, the rotation and the zoom on the iPad is flawless. Like there is never a time, no matter what app I'm in, where it doesn't do what I want it to do. Whereas with the, the Wacom, 
Uh, let's see if I can get it to do this. It, see, just right there. Like the, the touch and the pinch, it works most of the time, but sometimes it doesn't. And when it does, it's a bit slower, right? See, like there's a pinch that didn't work, you know. Um, and it seems like a little petty thing, but when you're working without a keyboard um, and you don't have your shortcuts in front of you, like you depend on that pinching and zooming and rotating all the time. So it makes a huge difference, I found, to be able to have that happen instantly. So point to iPad Pro. The, uh, the biggest drawback to the Wacom, easily the biggest drawback, uh, is the battery life. Um, the battery life is absolutely terrible. Uh, they claim, I'm not even going to say what they claim because it's nonsense. Uh, I could get maybe three hours out of this device and it's new. You know, I've only had it for a few weeks. Um, so that battery life is just going to get worse and worse. Now I noticed one thing when you first buy this device, there's a, uh, basically like a power saving mode. Um, when you load this up, it's automatically set at probably like 50%. So what they do is they lower the performance of the whole device and that helps save some battery life. The thing is, with that turned on, when I do a stroke in the program, there's like enormous lag. It was so much lag that I couldn't use it. Um, so when you turn that off, when you turn it to, you, you know, 100% performance, the lag disappears 100%, but then the battery life uh, diminishes big time. So I found with this device, with the Wacom, Wacom, um, I was always afraid to leave it on. You know, I, I would have to make sure that I ran back and plugged it in. Um, but with the iPad Pro, it, the, the battery life on this thing is so great that um, it just seemed like I could leave this hang like laying around for days, um, pick it up and draw and then put it back um, and never have to worry about the charge, which was pretty amazing. Um, I, I could use it for like three hours straight and it might have only diminished maybe 12% or something. Um, the pen, the pen has a battery, which is kind of a bummer because you have to charge it. Uh, but I thought that'd be a big deal. It really isn't because the battery in this lasts so long that whenever I charge this, I just have a cord right there and I charge the pen at the same time. So it's not, it's not really an issue. Um, all right, cool. So iPad beats them in a big way. Um, portability also goes to the iPad big time. Um, you can see, let's check this out. <clears throat> It can be hard to see there, but it's probably half as thin, okay? It's really thin. It's really, really light. Um, I believe that this is twice as light as this. I don't know. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but um, this you can just hold in your lap, and it's no problem. It feels like the weight of kind of a thick sketchbook. Um, this one, if I was to hold it in one hand, for more than you know 20 minutes like your hand is gonna get pretty tired so uh, the other thing is this thing the Wacom and I'm gonna talk about this a bit more but it's so much wider that uh, this thing won't fit in most of the laptop bags that I got um, I, it's not here but I purchased a cool just like a tablet case you know and it was a um, probably a 15 inch, 14 inch tablet case, and you have to cram this thing into it. Uh, so this guy is just big enough, or just small enough to not be a problem l lugging around. You know, it'll fit in just about anything. So I like, I like that a lot. Um, so, okay. The, let's talk about something where the Wacom does excel and that would be file management. So obviously, the Wacom is a full computer. It's got Windows on it. And that makes it so much easier to open your files, to save them, 
to organize them. Um, the hard drive space on this is like 256 gigabytes, where this one is only 64. Um, I found with the Wacom, it was so, uh, so easy to just, you know, I'm working at my uh, Wacom 24 HD on my Mac and save the file and then I go in the other room and just open it up right from my Dropbox um, like nothing and then you just hit file save it saves it then I can come back over here doing that on the iPad Pro is nothing short of a nightmare um, especially in Clip Studio Paint because they're trying to do some kind of cloud system that is not really working yet and I hope they fix that but basically, the only way I've really figured out to conveniently get files from one place to another is to airdrop them. Um, so I'll go to my machine and airdrop it to my iPad. It'll appear instantly. Then I save it, and I have to send it back. But doing that is making a copy of my file, not actually editing the same file. And uh, it's just, I don't know. It's not very cool. Um, I have Dropbox on here and I uh, I have like the iCloud file management system so I can view all my files and yes I can open them but the problem with iOS is that sometimes you click a file and maybe you can easily open it in Procreate but you can't easily open it in Clip Studio Paint maybe you can save it easily in one program but not another um, there's just not like a really cohesive file management system yet and uh, that that to me was a huge drawback um, all right so let's talk about speed at first when I got the Wacom I mentioned earlier that the battery performance had been set to 50 percent and uh, by doing that they severely limited the speed so I was shocked at first at how slow everything was. Um, it wasn't until I think I stumbled upon someone else's video where they mentioned that same thing and I turned the performance up and immediately it was way faster. What's crazy is this little device, this little 64 gigabyte iPad Pro, I found actually is faster than the Wacom and this is like an i7 processor uh, other bells and whistles and stuff um, and you know twenty one hundred dollars uh, but I was working with really large files you know like 30 inch by 30 inch 300 dpi and um, on both machines and I just found that like saving the files zooming in making strokes it was faster on the iPad which is which is crazy and of course this can totally depend on what app you're using too, I should say. Um, Clip Studio Paint is a super light program, so it does great on both. I did not try Photoshop on Wacom. Uh, maybe I should have, because obviously that's a big advantage, is that you can have Photoshop on this, not on this. That didn't really concern me though, because I was mainly looking for something to draw on, not really to do like text layout and other things. Uh, so, so basically, speed, um, they're, very, they're both very close. Um, one really isn't the winner there. Uh, startup time. So one thing that I think is actually really important with having a digital sketchbook is the quicker it starts up, I think the more likely you're going to actually use it. So with the iPad, it wins hands down. Um, I can try to show you here. I mean, when this thing goes to sleep, Come on, Apple. They always hide their buttons. All right, so when this thing's asleep, and it hasn't been asleep for very long, you know, you just touch it, and it's it's awake instantly. I mean, instantly. Uh, even when it goes into, like, a deeper sleep. The Wacom, uh, not at all. Um, it Because it uses Windows, uh, it always requires a lot longer to start from sleep. And of course, I'm pretty spoiled because it is it is still fast. Uh, so I just put it to sleep here, and you have to push this slide button, which I just did. Wake up! 
Come on, you're making me look bad. It's thinking about it. Wow, so you see what I mean. I think maybe it's taking a lot longer to start up because I just shut it down. There, it's back. So, and then, uh, and then I got to sign in with my password, which is annoying. That's the other thing too, you know, it's nice to have the fingerprint so you don't have to do this every time. But to me, that is actually a big deal. I mean, that may seem like a minor detail, but I found that like the longer it takes to start up, it's just not as convenient as just picking this thing up and drawing, drawing for five minutes, putting it back down, doing something else. So that was a big deal. Um, all right, so, oh yeah. So let's give some points to Wacom for a change. These, I love these buttons, all right? I, uh, when I work um, on my bigger screen here, I have this little keypad that I love. Um, so I am just, I'm totally used to using keyboard shortcuts. This touch ring, I've heard some people complain about it, but I love it. I mean, I think it, it works great. You can assign four different functions to it. So you can push the button once and change your brush size, uh, zoom in and out, you know, whatever. And then it's got all these shortcut keys. I found that with these uh, touch buttons, um, I almost, I really didn't feel like I needed a keyboard at all. You know, so that really made it pretty portable. Um, it also has, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is a really great improvement. It has these like pads on the back. Um, pretty difficult to see them, but they're raised up just a bit at the end. And what it does is it kind of makes, it almost feels like a PlayStation controller where it's like grips that fit in your hand. Um, and to me, that feels so much more solid when holding it than when you're holding this, which is basically just, just a giant kind of hard edged iPhone, you know. But the thing is, it's so light that you don't really need extra comfort, you know. But I, I just wanted to say that I really liked that, that aspect of it. Um, so the iPad has no buttons, obviously. It just has the, the sleep button. And even the pen doesn't have any buttons or an eraser, which I talked about in my last video. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the pens in just a moment. But um, I know that there's no way that Apple would ever add buttons to this thing because it's just not how they roll. Uh, but... I would love to see maybe like a, an integrated pop-up screen. Um, Clip Studio Paint has this excellent, where is it? It's gonna be difficult to see, but they have this excellent like pop-up along the side that you can program different buttons to. And I find that super useful. It's just that I wish they had it for the whole iPad, you know? I wish, because with this thing, this button can always do shift or command or control or whatever. Um, it would be really neat to have that because some things just like selecting multiple files at a time can be extremely difficult on this device uh, just because there is no, you know, you can't hold shift, you can't hold control or, or whatever. Um, all right, let's see my detailed notes. Okay, so the... Uh, one thing I like to do when I'm drawing is have reference files open. Um, that's really easy when you're working at your big workstation and you have like a monitor here and then your, your bigger tablet. But uh, with these devices, it's really tricky because the screen size is so tiny. Um, I've actually just been using, I have like a little Chromebook that I take around and I can just flip it open and, and look up reference materials on that. Um, but I was comparing the side-by-side -side Windows feature on both of these, and um, they both have it, but I feel like Windows is a little easier to do. Let me try to remember. Uh, yeah, so like you can just drag a window like that, and now you're seeing two programs side-by-side. -side. Um, this is really handy because I could have my um, 
you know, like a Chrome browser here with some reference material, and then I can draw on the left side. Um, with the Apple, you can also do it, but the problem is some apps don't support it. Um, and it's a little trickier. Uh, I always kind of forget, like I think you gotta, what do you do? This is why you don't skip rehearsals. All right, here we go. Right. So I think you go like this. No. That's really funny. So I, I've already forgotten how to do it, but there is a way, which I think illustrates that it's maybe not so intuitive, but there's a way to grab one program and, dra and drag and drop it so that you can see both side by side. Um, I wish that that was simpler to do, and I wish that it worked with all programs instead of just a few, and uh, that's one disadvantage for the iPad. Um, one thing I really miss um, is the ability to hover. So when we have, uh, let me go here. You know, when you're working on uh, a piece of artwork here, just like any of the other Wacom devices, when you move your pen and you hover it over the screen, you can see your cursor. You know, this is really helpful when just uh, making selections on things. Um, sometimes when you hover over files, it'll give you information, that kind of thing. Uh, the iPad, of course, does not do that. You can't, you can't hover at all. It doesn't register, and you can't ever see your cursor. Um, I would like to, I would love to see that option. I don't know if this is technically capable of that at all, but it would be great to turn on a cursor. Um, in some applications, I don't know. I know that would bu that would bug some people, but to me, it doesn't seem to support like a real uh, computer, I guess. Um, and that's the other quick thing too. I like that I can hook a mouse up to this thing, the Wacom, but I cannot ever hook a mouse up to this iPad Pro, and that's pretty annoying. Like when I'm trying to answer emails and things like that. Um, because uh, even though the touch function works great, it's still just so much easier and more efficient to use a mouse. And um, the, the dumb thing about the Wacom though, is they use, um, they don't use USB, the typical USB ports, they use the USB-C, uh, I believe it's called. And uh, it looks like a rounded thing that can you can flip either way. Um, I know that's a newer technology that probably will replace everything soon anyway. But what that means is if I want to plug any of my USB devices into this, then I've got to buy uh, adapters, which they're not, they're not very expensive, but it's just another thing I, I got to carry around then. Um, and that's unfortunate. Um, okay, so I'm about to wrap this up. Uh, bear with me here. Um, let me get to the, the good stuff. So one thing is a graphic designer uh, the Wacom does way, way better at, at just like managing your fonts and your files uh, and your presets. Um, when I wanted to bring all of my brushes for Clip Studio Paint, uh, which I sell on my website, um, well, that was weird. Uh, all you had to do is just open up a, f a window, drag them all at once. So I dragged like all 100 brushes all at once and I was done. Um, with this guy, with Clip Studio Paint, because, or I mean with the iPad Pro, because it doesn't have uh, like a real file management system, the only thing I could figure out was just to send each brush one at a time. Um, and there's just so many, I would never be able to do that. So uh, I just had to basically um, just send, you know, I picked like 10 of my favorites and put them on there. Um, but if I was ever editing a file that uh, you know used, I have thousands of fonts, as just about anybody does. 
um, who does this for a living. If I'm opening a file and I don't have the font, I don't even know how the heck I'm going to get it over. I guess I'm just going to have to find it and install one each one uh, one by one. Um, I haven't even experimented with that. But because this one uses Windows, it's a lot easier because I've got all of my fonts in a folder uh, which syncs with Dropbox and you just I have a program called Suitcase Fusion which just syncs the fonts automatically. Um, so if you're looking to use this for graphic design and you use Photoshop a lot and Adobe Illustrator for uh, for text files, um, I don't know how this is going to be useful to you, to be honest. Um, so you might want to keep that in mind. Um, all right. So the stylus, real quick, I want to compare the two. Um, I love I love the Wacom stylus. Uh, maybe I'm just too used to it, but the buttons I find really useful. You know, like one is a right click and um, this like gets the eyedropper tool uh, and the eraser. I use the eraser all the time. So this thing doesn't have an eraser. It doesn't have any buttons. Um, I really wish it did. This cursor is also, uh, not, sorry, not cursor, but the stylus is also, in my opinion, more precise. Like you can kind of see that one has a much finer tip where this is sort of like an unsharpened dull pencil. Um, I'm getting used to this. Uh, so I, I think I've talked to a lot of my peers who love the iPad Pro. And what I find out a lot of times is that they are upgrading from like an Intuos or they've never used a Cintiq. Uh, so because they're not used to this, um, this probably would be a lot better. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, it's, I'm warming up to it, but I prefer this. I also love like the rubber grip and how it's, you know, how it's broader, you know? This thing is so thin, I, my hand gets a little cramped from using it for a long time, but I've seen that people sell sleeves that I think I'll, um, I think I'll buy. So, um, all right, r real quick. Uh, so the most important thing is just drawing, right? Because that's what, that's why I got these devices. And over the last three weeks, I've spent um, probably other, every other project that I've done, I've, you know, alternated between let me do part of it on the iPad, let me do part of it on this guy. And they both have strengths and weaknesses. Basically, I was a little frustrated because, in my opinion, neither of these felt as good as working on the big uh, Wacom 24 HD. I was a little hopeful, I guess, that because this thing is real old. This thing's like seven years old. I was hopeful that maybe both of these devices would prove to be like more sensitive or, I mean, more sensitive in a good way. Um, and uh, I didn't find that. It could be that the screens are so small um, and the resolution is so uh, packed that I can just uh, I can just draw better on this bigger drafting table style thing. Um, but both of them were very capable, I should say. Uh, but I found that penciling is easier uh, with the iPad Pro because it feels like, uh, when I'm doing very soft lines, like just barely touching the screen, uh, that registers better on the iPad Pro than with the Wacom. Um, the Wacom, and which is bizarre because it has a tremendous pressure sensitivity. And I've played with the levels and all the settings a million times. And it, it just felt like when I am doing, well, when you're doing very, uh, it's not real important because you can't see the screen anyway, but when you just do dragging like very thin lines, um, they don't give you a lot of control until you start pressing. And uh, I don't know, I, I didn't like that. Um, I also felt like when inking, the iPad Pro in Clip Studio Paint actually gave me more control over uh, 
like really small detailed lines um, than the Wacom did, which was I was so surprised by because I thought that was sort of their selling point. Um, so basically, I, I even twice did the same piece of artwork because I'm just a nutcase. I did the I inked the same piece of artwork twice, once in this and once in this, and um, I showed them to my wife and she couldn't tell the difference. But I I felt like doing it on this um, on the iPad Pro just felt a little more accurate uh, and but it's it was so close it's so close that basically if I had to keep either of these devices I think I could make the same high, the same level of quality of artwork it's just that since this is twenty one hundred dollars um, twice as expensive as this if I can produce the same thing on this and I can on that, then it's an obvious, uh, obvious choice. Um, and then one more thing that I almost forgot. Um, the screen size of the iPad Pro, I didn't even really expect this to be anything um, of note, but this is basically the ratio of like an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So when I'm doing t-shirt designs, it's like it fits perfectly in here. Uh, and we, when you turn off, you know, when you when you turn off the uh, all the menus, I can see my whole artwork. So it almost doesn't really matter that I can't see it in another screen or I'm not zoomed in. But with the Wacom, they chose to do like a strange widescreen, right? And I can see why they might have done that. They probably were thinking, all right, well, let's give them a lot of room for their palettes, right? But what happened was, uh, if I'm, this is a square piece of artwork, but if I'm working on something that's portrait shaped, like a t-shirt design, um, most of this screen space is gonna be wasted. So what I can do is I can flip the screen and work this way, but now when I do that, the screen is even, it's, it's very narrow, right? And then your palettes creep up and take up most of the space. And then your buttons are up here. And it, it just felt, it just didn't feel like I had the same amount of screen space, if that makes sense. So basically, um, and I see lots of questions, which is great. So I'm going to answer those real quick. But just to wrap it up. Um, I bought both the iPad Pro 12.9 and the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro and I'm going to be returning the Mobile Studio Pro so if you get if you happen to buy a refurbished Mobile Studio Pro it might have been this one um, and I'm gonna keep this and yes I know the Clip Studio Paint subscription model is a bummer but it's the it's the best program I've used on this hands down so um, I'll pay it and uh, you know keep using it so uh, let me get to your questions real quick um, <clears throat> yeah so just to, yeah that's right I'm sorry I never answered this but um, I have a question about whether this is the 13 inch or the 16 inch this is only the 13 inch um, a couple of my friends recommended that I get the 16 inch. It's just that, that that's a significant jump in cost. Um, maybe that would have made a difference, uh, but I feel like with the 16 inch, first of all, um, I mean, I think it adds another five to $600 maybe. And I feel like it would then be so big that it really loses the, any sense of portability at all. Um, so that's what I was a little worried about. Um, and I would imagine that would make the battery life last even less, would be my guess. Um, <clears throat> I got a couple people here saying that they really love the iPad Pro. You know, I've heard that over and over again. Uh, yeah, and with the subscription model for Clip Studio Paint, that is a big advantage that Wacom has, is that I've already bought the program from my desktop computer so I all I did was just install it on Windows and 
I don't owe any more money and I'm done. But here I got to pay a monthly fee. Of course, with this device, I'm out an extra thousand bucks. So I think it's probably a, uh, a good deal. Um, Okay, I have a question about um, the Microsoft Surface. So I have not used any other devices besides the iPad Pro and besides the Wacom. So um, I hope that someday I can. Uh, the problem that I kept seeing with the Microsoft Surface Pro, even though it was highly recommended by a lot of people, was that it seemed like they had a lot of hardware issues. Um, there were a lot of three and a half star reviews and uh, I just didn't want to pay you know some of them were like 1500 bucks so I didn't want to pay that for a device that might work you know 70 percent of the time um, so let me see thanks for all the questions um, if I don't get to all the questions here I'm gonna try to uh, respond later um, Let's see. Yeah, like someone is bringing up, they're telling me um, the best way to install fonts on an iPad, and it involves getting an app, and then the way the app works is it emails fonts to you. Uh, so you email fonts back and forth. And to me, it's, it's like, if you really want this to be for graphic designers, you gotta figure out a way to have a real font solution. I mean, emailing yourself fonts is not going to do it. Uh, so let me see here. Um, yeah, so Randy uh, is just asking, can I tell a difference with the pressure sensitivity? Um, the pressure sensitivity between all three of these, my Wacom 24 HD, the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, and the Pen, are all vastly different. So I had the same brushes you know the brushes I make the same program on all three of these and yet in each program I have to like go in and adjust the pressure curves for everything um, I was ex I was hoping to really like the mobile studio pro pressure but it's just it feels weird to me it feels like there's actually not much input at the lower end and then maybe too much at the higher end I don't know um, again, I could just be too used to the other one. Um, this one, the iPad Pro, does really great things in some areas, but not others. So, th yes, there's a big difference between all three of them, but I couldn't spell out exactly what that difference even is. Um, oh, thanks. Somebody is filling me in on how to do the side-by-side -side app. And... All right, great. Well, there's a lot of questions, um, but I think I'll come back to them later. So thanks again for watching. Um, I've got some more tutorials and videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Have a good weekend.